In this video, I talk about pens. When I first got into calligraphy, I was somewhat lost looking for reliable websites and reliable pens. Pens that weren't going to break after two or three uses. The pens I mentioned in this video are not the only pens out there. There are thousands of other high quality pens. These are just my personal favorite. Links to everything will be in the description down below. But before I begin, there are three supplies I think every calligrapher should consider owning. And those are a rolling ruler, which I use to create straight and even guidelines. If you don't already use guidelines, I highly recommend you start today. They make everything look even and professional. Next, a pencil that creates soft, barely visible lines. This is a Lira drawing pencil and comes in many grades. 4H being the one that I use the most because it's light enough to still be visible but not too dark to where it becomes difficult to erase. I want to take a few seconds to thank Thomas. Thank you so much for submitting your name. And lastly, a Nita eraser. After I'm done with the letters and I'm 100% sure the ink is dry, I will carefully use my kneaded eraser to erase any pencil marks. I try to avoid the ink if possible, even if it means leaving a few visible marks. I prefer to be safe than to accidentally smudge the ink with my eraser. For ink and paper, I will only use this Moon Palace Sumi ink and this HP Premium 120 gram printer paper. I will go in depth on ink and paper in a future video, but for now this paper will work fine with every pen I mention. I'm going to start with the pens I use for black letter, but keep in mind they are not limited to only black letter, you can use them for various script styles. Here I have my favorite nib for black letter, and that is the Bross Broad nib on my speedball straight holder. I think this is the first nib I ever purchased and since then I haven't really enjoyed any other broad nib. This nib has an ink reservoir and can either be dipped in ink or filled with ink using a brush. I can get very clean and even strokes but can be a bit difficult to get hairlines for any flourishes you might want to add to your letters. I found that pushing the ink with the edge of the nib will give you a decent sized hairline. Though this method only works well if you already have ink laid on the paper. Another way that works even better is to use a pointed nib after you are done with the letters. I want to stress that not everything needs hairlines or flourishes. I am just giving you examples of what you can achieve. Most times simplicity goes a long way. Make sure to clean the nib when you're done. Any leftover ink will be a pain to clean when it's dry. So make it easier on yourself and clean after each use. I usually clean by adding water, sometimes a bit of rubbing alcohol and wiping clean with a paper towel. If you have a hard time removing the ink, use a soft bristle toothbrush. That usually does the trick. Next, I have the pen I recommend the most for black letter and that is the Pilot Parallel Pen. This pen comes in four sizes, though the 3.8 millimeter is my favorite. This pen does require ink cartridges, but you can also dip the pen in ink. If you decide to go that route, make sure you use thin ink. Any thicker ink will clog up the feed and can result in poor ink flow. I mainly use black ink cartridges, but they also have color cartridges made specially for the parallel pen. One thing I really like about this pen is that you can modify it to give your strokes a more unique look. If you want a video on how to modify a Pilot Parallel Pen, let me know in the comments down below. I can get perfect hairlines using the edge of the pen and the strokes are as clean as can be. This pen is super easy to use. If you are thinking of getting into calligraphy, I can't recommend this pen enough. Moving on to what I use for brush lettering or for what is referred to as crayligraphy is the Crayola Broadline Markers. I first used these when I was in 5th grade and it's crazy that I use them more now than I did back when I was in school. 
You can make thin lines and also get thicker lines with the more pressure you apply. They come in a variety of colors, so creating a vibrant masterpiece is just a few strokes away. Next I have these Pentel brush pens. These pens have a very flexible tip, so creating thin and thick lines doesn't require much pressure. They come in orange, blue, red, green, and many other colors. Pens like these that offer a variety of colors and worked straight out of their packaging makes picking up a pen to write enjoyable. Which brings me to these Echoline brush pens. These also come in a variety of colors and have a very flexible tip. Very little pressure is needed to go from thin to thick strokes. One interesting thing about this pen is if your tip begins to fray, you can unscrew the pen and it comes with a backup tip. You can just carefully remove it, flip it to the less frayed side, and you're good to go. I owned this pen for a while now and I didn't know about this until a few days ago. My mind is still blown. When it comes to copper plate, I only use one holder and that is the Hourglass Oblique Holder from Paper and Ink Arts. I used to have the Speedball Oblique Holder but decided to upgrade to this. Don't get me wrong, I still love the Speedball Oblique Holder. I used it for my first year and still recommend it for beginners. But this holder just feels better. The flange on this holder can fit nibs of many sizes. When it comes to nibs, I have used this Bross Blue Pumpkin Nib more than any other nib. For me it works so perfectly, I'm going to be sad the day it decides to give out on me. I can easily buy another nib, but this particular one really stole my heart. The flex of this nib is really spot on. Not too flexible, while at the same time not too stiff. The hairlines may not be as thin compared to other nibs, but I'm not complaining. This nib holds a great amount of ink and from my experience it can achieve some of the best thick strokes. I have also used nibs like the Zebra G, Nico G, Gillette 404, Browse Rose and the Hunt 22. They all work great and I highly recommend any of the ones I just mentioned. Keep in mind some are more flexible than others. Websites like Paper and Ink Arts and John Neal Bookseller offer nib sampler packs that come with a wide assortment of nibs. And you never know, your new favorite nib may be among those in the sampler pack. The last and final pen I wanted to mention is this Kaweco Sport Fountain Pen. With this pen, you don't get different line weights, but I always enjoy using this pen with my regular handwriting. This pen is simple, but every now and then, simplicity is all you need. I don't worry about my letters looking perfect, I just grab a piece of paper and write. And those are my favorite pens. I have a few others, I'll share those with you in a future video. But before I leave, I want to let everybody in on a little secret. Any of these pens I just mentioned aren't going to magically make you better. You have to practice a lot. They might make writing a certain script easier, but if you're not practicing, you're not going to improve. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.